What's happening? It's Shane here, and today we're gonna to be going over the common career tier list. This is going to be a tier list ranked from S tier, which is the best, to F tier, which is the worst, of common careers. And these are careers that I've seen people recommend uh, in the comment section. Now this is going to be a preliminary list. It's gonna be a pretty quick video. I'm probably gonna do a follow-up video to this that has maybe like the top 100 most common careers. So comment down below which ones you want me to include in that video. But with that being said, let's get started started right after you gently boop the like button. Huh. Well. First one on the list is going to be accountant. This is a very common career. I believe there's uh, several million accountants in the United States. A very flexible career. There's so many different opportunities you can go for. There's so many different career paths you can go down. When you see these extremely common careers, there's usually a lot of flexibility because of the fact that there's probably like a hundred different types of accountants. So if you become a tax accountant, for instance, you end up hating it for whatever reason, there's like 99 different options for you. On top of that, the statistics for this one are pretty good as well. Many accountants, after getting some experience, might end up you know, climbing the corporate ladder, becoming like executives, for instance, or they might start their own business. So this is a really good career. I'm gonna go ahead and put this one into A tier. Next one on the list is going to be cashiers. Now guys, uh, this is something I'm not trying to like make, you know, make fun of people or anything like that. Um, this is not going to rank very well, right? I'm just gonna say right now, I'm putting this one into F tier. Okay, one of the most common careers out there, there's like 5 million cashiers or something like that in the United States. This is a job that you get maybe like as your first job, or it's a job you do part-time while you're going to college or something along those lines. Okay, you don't wanna end up uh, getting stuck as a cashier. Doesn't pay very well, very repetitive work. You're not necessarily learning all that much in terms of skills that are going to be employable. This one is gonna go into F tier. Next very common profession is going to be doctor. Now, in my opinion, there are a lot of downsides to becoming a doctor. I talked about that in a video that I made on the channel. A lot of people try to become medical doctors doctors for the wrong reason, they go into it for the money or something like that. And that's why it has some of the lowest job satisfaction out of all of the careers out there. However, if you go into it for the right reasons, you know what you're getting yourself into, this can be a fantastic career. Okay, generally speaking, the right type of person to become a doctor is someone who's extremely motivated, right? They're like an A type personality, you're going to be working like minimum probably 60 hours a week as a doctor. And then when you're going through residency, it's going to be more like 80 hours a week. When you're going to med school, you're probably going to be studying like you know 60 hours a week but for the right person this is a fantastic career uh, you know the statistics on this one are just incredible uh, you're gonna be making hundreds of thousands of dollars a year very easily yes you can it's just not reported in journals. There's always going to be job opportunities out there for doctors. This is really good. This one goes into S tier. Next on the list is going to be another very common career, engineer. You know, a lot of people might have had parents out there where if you're not a doctor, a lawyer, or an engineer, then you're a failure. Um, and that's not necessarily true, but there is some truth to it. You know, doctors and engineers, in my opinion, are really good careers to go down. Lawyer, eh, not so much. I'm gonna get to that one in a moment. But yeah, engineer is great. Um, it's also really good because you can just get a bachelor level degree in order to get into it. Whereas for doctor, you have to get a doctorate, of course. But when it comes to bachelor level degrees, engineer scores the best in pretty much every statistic. Engineering is very difficult. Uh, it's not an easy degree to get at all. So that's something you want to consider. But overall, this one definitely goes into S tier. Next on the list is going to be lawyer. Now, this is one where, you know, all those cookie cutter careers that uh, your parents might have said, oh, you have to be this, this, or this. Uh, this is one where I actually kind of disagree. I think that uh, becoming a lawyer, it's gotten incredibly saturated. So yes, you can uh, become a lawyer and be extremely successful, but it's super competitive extremely saturated and it's kind of gotten to the point where the only people who make a ton of money are the ones at the very very tippy top we're talking like the top one percent of lawyers so this is one of those careers where if you're super competitive there's a lot of money at the very top but pretty much everyone else kind of gets screwed over and i made a video on this uh, and I was actually shocked when I was doing research on this, uh, how much people hate being a lawyer. I knew going into it that uh, being a lawyer was getting saturated, but uh, you know, I've done research on lots of different careers, lots of different degrees. This one, I would say uh, people hate being a lawyer more than they hate just about any other type of career. <laughs> 
So you can check out my video and I, you know, talk about all the different reasons uh, why that is. Um, but I'm not gonna put it too far down because of the fact that it's there still is, you know, if you are a certain type of personality, this can still be a good one. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this one into C tier. We're gonna go C tier for lawyer. Next on the list is going to be maintenance and repair workers. This one uh, I got from BLS. A lot of different, uh, you know, versions of this, like trade careers is kind of the biggest one. But there's been such an emphasis on higher education, you know, getting your bachelor's, your master's, your doctorate, uh, that people have kind of forgotten how important it is to have trade workers and people who are kind of on the front lines using their hands doing that type of, you know, general maintenance work. And so in my opinion, this is definitely making a comeback, right? So it used to be that, you know, oh, you have to get your, uh, your college degree to be successful. And that's still Still true to some extent, but not as true as it used to be, definitely. Uh, there's a lot of great trade careers out there. One thing I will say about trade careers in general is when you look at the statistics on BLS, they don't look all that good. But the truth is a lot of people who go into trade careers do cash transactions and the way that BLS uh, collects their statistics, um, they're mostly you know collecting it from companies who pay directly into bank accounts, right? So the statistics are off. I can tell you for sure a lot of the trade careers on BLS, it says they make like 50,000 a year. Well, I'm telling you, they make at least 80 to 100,000 a year in many cases. But with that being said, this is a pretty broad category. Some trade careers are a lot better than others. Um, there's also some downsides uh, of going into the trades. For instance, you know, let's say you have like back problems or you get some kind of injury. Well, when you're in the trades, you have to use your body, right? So if you have a back problem and you have to pick things up all day, that's gonna be a huge problem. Now, as a healthcare professional, uh, I've treated many patients who are in the trades and they do have injuries. And that is just incredibly tough for them because they have to continue using their body uh, while they have an injury. So a lot of these patients end up on, you know, pain medications and that sort of thing, and that can cause a lot of other issues. So there's upsides and downsides to going into the trades. Um, you know, it can really wreck your body over a long period of time if you do it 20, 30 years. But overall, I'm gonna put this one into B tier. Next one on the list is going to be manager. And there are, when I was doing uh, research on this, if I remember correctly, over 3 million managers in the United States. So managers in general, just across the board, doesn't matter what industry you're looking at, doesn't matter what career type you're looking at, managers tend to make way more than the non-manager counterparts. Leadership skills, management skills, company Companies really select for people who they think have these, right? So even if they're interviewing you for a non-manager position, they're looking for cues that you're somebody who might be able to move into a management or leadership role in the future. And of course, because of supply and demand, they're going to have to pay you more. But with that higher pay also comes more responsibility. So yeah, there's always going to be, you know, some positives and negatives to this. But, you know, one of my best friends, for instance, he got an, uh, an associate's degree in business actually not even a bachelor's and then he kind of worked his way up became a manager at just like a local clothing store and then he became a manager at kind of like a fortune 500 company and he's making over a hundred thousand dollars a year just with an associate's degree right so that's the power of developing those leadership skills those management skills but there's a lot of stress that comes along with that you are basically responsible for like everything that goes on people are going to be calling out all the time so even on your days off a lot of the time you're going to have to basically be doing work which sucks but overall I'm gonna go ahead and put manager into a tier next one on the list is nurse there's over 3 million nurses in the United States now there's a lot of different types of nurses there's basically different levels you know there's basically like an associate level nurse there's a bachelor level nurse a master's level nurse and a doctorate level nurse there's also a ton of different types of careers out there and sub careers nurses also a lot of the time will work their way up within like a hospital system sometimes they might end up becoming like director or assistant director of a hospital. So this is one of those careers that's extremely flexible. For whatever reason, you hate whatever career you go for originally, which happens all the time. People, this happens all the time, I'm telling you. I've done lots of consultations, I've worked with a ton of people, and this happens a lot. Even if you make a good plan, a lot of the time you end up not liking it. But if you go into a career like this, like nursing, it's extremely flexible, there's a lot of different options for you. So nursing, I'm gonna go ahead, put this one into A tier. All right, so next on the list is going to be office clerks. And this is gonna be like people who, you know, work in like cubicles and, 
you know, in the movies, they show them, you know, printing paper and all that sort of thing. Basically people who work within an office and they take care of the general day-to-day -day operations of a business. Not the most glamorous job also in terms of, you know, job outlook and how much they get paid, that sort of thing. Not the best. A lot of people also aren't big fans of kind of that corporate structure, just being within a corporation kind of sucks all the creativity and the life out of people. So this one, I'm going to go ahead and put it into... I'm gonna go D tier just cause there's no none others in D tier. Cause I could put it in C tier. I don't know, we'll, we'll keep it D tier. Maybe I might change it. Next on the list is going to be salesmen. There are millions and millions of different types of sales jobs here in the United States. Now, I honestly think that everybody should have a sales job at least once in their lifetime because it's basically gonna teach you interpersonal skills on steroids, okay? So I'm an introvert, but I, you know, managed to get myself a sales job. I, you know, one of my dad's friends basically gave me a job I basically just went along with him one time and watched him do it and then I started doing it myself and that honestly was one of the th moments in my life that changed my entire life okay so I was just selling eyeglass cleaner at first literally just like I would sell eyeglass cleaner to people and uh, it also had anti-fog and like anti um, sweat properties so they wouldn't fog up people who wear glasses know exactly what I'm talking about you know if you go into a really humid environment uh, it kind of like makes the glass a little sweaty. And if you go into like a cold environment and then you go indoors, a lot of the time your glasses will fog up. People who, who wear glasses know exactly what I'm talking about. But yeah, I would sell that to people and uh, it taught me so much. And I basically kept doing this all throughout college. Um, it was a great job because I could just do it on the weekends when I didn't really have too much else going on. Cannot recommend doing this one enough. Um, they've done surveys and one of the most common things that they see with billionaires and millionaires is the fact that they all had sales jobs early on in their life. And this isn't just about like being like a slimy car salesman. That's what a lot of people think. It's literally just understanding, like having emotional intelligence and understanding what other people want and how you can mutually benefit both parties. Now, with that being said, not the perfect job for everybody, especially on a long-term basis. A lot of the time salesmen will work off of commission. So if you have a bad month, you might not make hardly any money at all. If you have a really good month, you make a ton of money and then you kind of end up spending all of it. There's actually like articles and books they've written about this. It's called like the salesman's pendulum where it's kind of like a very up and down lifestyle. So you have to be very disciplined with your money because you never know when something bad is going to happen to the economy. But yeah, this is a fantastic one. Um, I would say, honestly, I, I want to put it in S tier. Um, I think that everyone should do it at least once in their life, but I guess on a long-term basis, probably A tier. Very close to S tier though. Next one on the list is going to be software developer. So any type of programming like coder, software engineer, uh, data science, all that sort of thing. Well over a million software developers here in the United States. I've talked about this one extensively on my channel. This is the future. Uh, this is just fantastic one to get into. So many different benefits. This one goes into S tier. Next one on the list is going to be teacher. Another super common career. Uh, this one, you know, I've talked about this before. It doesn't really get paid enough in my opinion. If you get an education degree, you're pretty much guaranteed to get a job. So that is one upside to this one. However, the job's pretty stressful. You don't get paid very much. There's not a lot of mobility for you. So I guess because of the fact that uh, you have a lot of job stability, you definitely are going to be able to get a job. I'll put this one into C tier, but there's a lot of downsides to it as well. And then the next one on the list is going to be truck driver. Very common one as well. Over 2 million truck drivers in the United States. Now, one thing I'll say about truck driver is it's a great option for somebody who doesn't want to have to get a degree or you don't really have time to do other things and you just need a job like ASAP that pays really well. So for instance, I have some uh, friends whose you know, family immigrated here to the United States and one of the most common jobs that they end up getting is truck driver. And the reason for that is because you can get your CDL, which is like a truck driver uh, driver's license within a couple months. And then you can start off right off the bat making like $70,000, $80,000 a year. If you own your own truck, I've seen it where people are making over $200,000 a year. Now there are a lot of downsides to this profession. You know, you're probably going to be driving, you know, long long distances that can get pretty boring. You're also going to be really far away from your family for long periods of time. So of course, like all careers, you know, you need to make sure that the lifestyle you're going to be living is going to be right for you. But overall, I'm going to put this one
on into B tier. Okay, so like I said before, these were just some of the suggestions that you guys gave me. Uh, if there's any that I missed, which I'm sure I missed a ton of them, comment them uh, down in uh, the comments below. And when I'm making the next video, the update to this one, I will include all of them. As long as there are careers where there's like a lot of people in them, of course, like I'm not gonna include a career where there's only like, you know, 10,000 of them in all of the United States. If you haven't done already, go ahead, gently tap that like button, hit the subscribe button, ring the notification bell, and comment down below any thoughts, comments, etc. that you have on the video, and I will see you guys next time.